We will tell you about the most Jewish of all Portuguese towns. And the most Portuguese of all Jewish communities in Portugal. Belmonte is the birthplace of Pedro Alves Cabral, the navigator who discovered Brazil. It is also a top-of-the-hill site inhabited since medieval times, if not since antiquity. We at Foreign Business View are with you. Subscribe and hit the like button. While we are traveling from Guarda, shown earlier, to Belmonte, we'll tell you briefly about how Jews appeared in Portugal. And then we'll show you the town itself. Jews originated as an ethnic and religious group in the Middle East during the Late Bronze Age, that is, the 13th century before Common Era. A map of the region in the 9th century before Common Era depicts the Kingdom of Judah, shown in yellow, with its capital Jerusalem, and the Kingdom of Israel, in blue, with its capital Samaria. Further history mentions the Babylonian captivity or Babylonian exile. That's the period in Jewish history during which many Judeans from the ancient kingdom of Judah were captives in Babylon, the capital of the Neo-Babylonian Empire. It followed their defeat in the Jewish-Babylonian War and the destruction of Solomon's Temple in Jerusalem. Here we get into the tunnel under the mountain range and find ourselves under heavy rain on the other side. This captivity in Babylon is regarded to be the start of the Jewish diaspora. After the Persian Empire expanded and conquered the region, the exiled Jews were allowed to return and rebuild the temple. After the Roman conquest of the region, Judea became a Roman province subject to direct Roman rule. In the 1st and the 2nd centuries of the Common Era, the Jews attempted several revolts against the Romans. Their failure resulted in the destruction of Jerusalem and the Second Temple, as well as the expulsion of many Jews, along with the economic burden put on them. A range of high mountains is mostly to the right of the road we are driving. Here we can see how well the slope is secured. Moreover, after Christianity became the state religion of the Roman Empire in the 4th century, the emperors persecuted their Jewish subjects and restricted their rights. Smaller Jewish communities had to spread out across various parts of the Roman Empire. What happened to other groups of Jews elsewhere? We have either told in the videos of the playlist in the upper right corner and in the description, or we'll tell you later. Those who moved to the Iberian Peninsula dwelt in the Roman province of Lusitania. We get into the second tunnel. There is no more rain after it and the sky is blue again. That's very typical of the Portuguese weather that we've been experiencing during the whole trip. With the fall of the Roman Empire, Jews found themselves under the rule of Vidigots. They initially gave Jews an equal treatment with other ethnic and religious groups of the peninsula. However, after the Visigoths joined the Catholic Church, they placed ever greater economic burdens on the Jewish population and later persecuted them severely. By the way, we have seen the, the Gothic architecture in the town of Edania Apelia. In 711, the Moorish invasion of the Iberian Peninsula was seen by many Jewish inhabitants as a liberation. It marked the beginning of what is considered the Golden Age, when Jews were generally accepted in society and Jewish religious, cultural and economic life flourished. Jewish philosophers, mathematicians, astronomers, poets and rabbinical scholars were able to work productively and left a rich heritage. In front of us, we see a mountain with a row of wind power stations on it. 
During their conquista, the Jews, since many of them knew Arabic, were used by the Christians as both spies and diplomats. After the conquest of Granada, the Spanish crown had ordered in 1492 the expulsion of the Jewish population. Many Spanish Jews fled to Portugal. The Portuguese were reluctant to admit the Jews into their country, but Joao II proposed to collect a tax and their seats served as passports to enter Portugal. Here we are warned about strong side wind along the road. When Manuel I of Portugal married a daughter of the Spanish rulers, Isabella of Aragon, he was pressed to align his policies with theirs. So he decreed that all Jews and Muslims in Portugal had until October 1497 to either be baptized or leave the country. And so many Jews were expelled. Others tried to integrate into the Portuguese society. We are exiting the highway and turning in the direction of Belmonte. Soon we observe the road sign pointing to Estrella Mountains that we had seen to the right of the highway. Many Portuguese Jews had to become new Christians. These were Jews converting to Christianity, also called Converses, or pejoratively Maranas. Jews converted to Christianity voluntarily or through force. Some remained crypto Jews, that is, continued practicing Judaism secretly. But the legal distinction between so called old Christians and new Christians was maintained. Thousands of Portuguese Jews had to emigrate to various countries. Some had to move to northern Africa. You are welcome to watch our video about Shafshawen in Morocco, where many Jews arrived. A substantial migration of converses from the Iberian Peninsula to Amsterdam took place from the 1600s to the early 1800s. Once in Amsterdam, many returned to Judaism openly and publicly. They called themselves Portuguese Jews. Here's a Portuguese synagogue in Amsterdam that was completed in 1675. But most of them who were expelled from the Iberian Peninsula ended up in the Ottoman Empire. This community, known as Sephardic, that is Spanish, continued to speak Judeo-Spanish language, even in the beginning of the 20th century. We observe the silhouette of the castle against the brightly lit sky. We enter the municipality and move up the hill where the medieval buildings can be found. The castle of Belmonte occupies the highest point in the town. This site has been inhabited since the Roman conquest of the Iberian Peninsula. The castle has been known since the reign of the first king of Portugal, Afonso I, also called Enriquez. We talked about him in our video dedicated to the city of Guimarães. Next King Sancho I, whom we mentioned in the video about Garda, granted Belmonte a floral charter in 1199, which established the town council and made it free from the feudal control. The Alcanises Treaty signed in 1297, which we discussed in our video about Miranda, stopped the war and defined the modern borders between Portugal and Spain. So, the Belmonte Castle lost strategic importance, and since that moment the town started developing beyond the castle walls. And in the time of the Portuguese interregnum, the castle was conquered by the new King João I, whom we mentioned in the videos about Chaves and Guarda. Near the castle, at the Brazil Square, the Santiago Church and the Cabral's Chapel are situated. Cabral's were a noble family in Belmonte, and their surname is coming from the word Cabra, meaning goat. The church combines Romanesque, Gothic and Mannerism elements and is thought to be built in 
1240 by order of Maria Jill Cabral. Torre Sinera nearby is translated just Bell Tower. Capel dos Cabrais was built there in 1433 by Pedro Alvarez Cabral's parents. The chapels of Santa Antonio and Calvario are a complex formed by two small buildings located close to the castle and the church of Santiago. Capel de Santo Antonio is the older one and was built, according to different sources, between 15th and 17th centuries. There is a coat of arms of the Cabral family by the entrance. The chapel of Calvario dates from the 19th century. From the castle with many chapels related to Cabral family, we move along the street named Rue Pedro Alvarez Cabral. On the street we see a well-maintained water tower, which became the decoration and symbol of Belmonte. It can be seen from different parts of the town. We keep moving along the Rue Pedro Alvarez Cabral and soon see his statue on the right. He was the first human in history who has been to four continents – America, Europe, Asia and Africa – uniting all of them in his famous voyage of 1500. He also conducted the first substantial exploration of the northeast coast of South America and landed for Portugal. This became Brazil. By the statue on the stone we read April 22, 1500, on this day at evening time, we had a view of land, the land of Veracruz, that is the true cross. The next gap between buildings to the right is the tribute to the firefighters. And next square further on is also named after firefighters. However, Nothing points to the firefighters here. This looks more like a memorial place to Belmonte itself, which is called monumental, enigmatic, timeless, mystical and legendary. On the other side it mentions parish, people, identity and social memory. Everywhere we see that we are at the top of the mountain and the edge of the flat area is very close. One more beautiful place with the New Year decorations is already quite close to another memorial building. Further on, on the same street, we see a DNM museum. DNM stands for Descoberta de Novo Mundo, the discovery of the new world. The museum is devoted to maritime Portuguese discoveries and especially to the discovery of Brazil by Pedro Alvarez Cabral. It depicts the entire discovery's epopeia, from the preparation of the trip to India to the arrival of Pedro Alvarez Cabral in 1500s in Brazil. The museum is known for the usage of the modern technologies. Visiting Denham is believed to be like taking a trip over 500 years back. On the right is the Ecological Museum of the Zezere River, which flows quite close to Belmonte and falls into the Tagus River. It is also interesting that this museum is situated in the former granary of the same Cabrache family, that is, the relatives of the famous traveler. We arrive at the hotel called Altitude Alojumento, that is, accommodation at the top. There we had a great New Year's Eve. Early morning, January 1st, we started a walk to explore other parts of Belmonte. We noticed that many cities and towns in Portugal have a Church of Misericordia, that is compassion. Belmonte is different. It has a street of Misericordia. It divides into Rua di Reita and Rua de Fonte de Rosa, which is on the southeastern edge of the mountain top. The Jewish quarter is believed to be between these two streets. 
Here you can see small granite houses. One story. The little community of Belmonte was discovered in 1917 by the engineer Samuel Schwartz. He was a Polish-Portuguese Jewish mining engineer, archaeologist and historian of the Jewish diaspora. We talked about the history of Jews living in Polish cities in several of our videos. Be sure to watch them. At the 11th World Zionist Congress, Samuel Schwartz met Agatha Barbash. And they married in April 1914 in Odessa, now Ukraine. Several videos about Jewish Ukraine can also be seen on our Daju channel. Here we approach the Bet Eliyahu Synagogue, which stands at the very edge of the mountain top. It was opened only in December 1996, built with funds from wealthy Moroccan and American Jews. Only in the 1970s the community established contact with the Jews of Israel and officiated Judaism as its religion. Not far from the castle there is the center of Judaic education and the building of the Portuguese Jewish network. The Jewish community of Belmonte is believed to be the only community in Portugal that can be considered truly Portuguese that is not consisting of Jews from Spain. Archaeological data testifies long Jewish presence in Belmonte. When the Church of uh, San Francisco was demolished in 1910, a stone from the first synagogue in Belmonte dated 1297 was found. In 2005, the Jewish Museum of Belmonte was inaugurated in the city, the first of its kind in Portugal. Although there are many signs of Jewish culture in Belmonte, Catholic churches are also present here as the Igreja Matriz de Belmonte, that is, the Church of the Mother of Belmonte. Along with the rich history, Portugal is a modern country with good roads and communication means. And we go further to explore one of the most Portuguese villages and one of the highest mountains. Your guides Константин Трасовский, Татьяна Андреева and Leo Krasovsky invite you to join us and watch our other videos from Portugal and other countries.